what is at stake is more than one small country. It is a big idea, a new world order. And this is the best thing to establish the new world order. No more zero period. I think no even that, even that does not describe why the world has changed so much and why the world has turned so much toward a new world order and a new kind of civilization. Order. We have before us the opportunity to forge for ourselves and for future generations a new world order, a world where the rule of law, not the law of the jungle, governs the conduct of nations. When we are successful, and we will be, we have a real chance at this new world order, an order in which a credible United Nations can use its peacekeeping role to fulfill the promise and vision of the UN's founders. When our founders declared a new order of the ages, when soldiers died in wave upon wave, I believe is our destiny of success in this new world order. So, in conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, a new world is emerging. It is a new world order with significantly different and radically new challenges for the future. From 1945 and the end of the war through 1989 and the end of the Cold War, we had a worldview, Republican and Democratic presidents alike, from Harry Truman to George Bush, stood for freedom and stood for certain propositions that would make America strong and healthy and grow the middle class and shrink poverty and stand against communism. And after 1989, President Bush kept said, and it was a phrase that I often use myself, that we needed a new world order, and instead it looks like we got a lot of disorder. Give them a stake in creating the kind of uh, uh, world order, uh, world order, uh, world order, uh, world order that I think all of us would like. Uh, there's a need for a new world order, but it has different characteristics. And as elected president, official in charge of their protection, I couldn't do anything about it. But the point here is, it's not about me, it's about the idea of freedom. It's you, about the future of the whole region. It's about the future of Europe and a, a new world order. And what I think is that France said yesterday or the day before that they want one world order, a new world order, at the end of this event. Two nights ago, the government used $900 billion of your money to give loans to businesses and guarantee those loans. Did they even ask you? We'll talk about this wild spike in oil uh, and then all the things that you know, uh, the new world order in effect on Wall Street. On the back of the dollar bill, you see the symbol on the left-hand side of the bill, which is uh, Anuit Coeptus, which means our enterprise is now a success. Or our enterprise is crowned with success. Anuit Coeptus. So you're saying, fine, so you have an enterprise and it's now crowned with success. What enterprise are you talking about? Novas ordo seclorum. Novas is novas, meaning new. Ordo is order, and seclorum is where we get the word secular, meaning the world. So it's new order of the world, the new world order. George Bush's new world order is now a success. Bill, you've heard an awful lot of dramatic speeches and seen dramatic moments in times of great gravity for the nation. How would you assess this evening? This was a stirring address, in my view, shorter than his father's speech when he announced the New World Order. 1934 is when the Federal Reserve actually finally took total control of the United States monetary system, and that's when they said it is now a success, because this is a symbol. This is an emblem of a secret society, a secret society of Freemasons called the Illuminati, the German Bavarian Illuminati. They were a, a secret society founded in the south of, in the south of, uh, it, of uh, Germany. They were called the Illuminati, the illuminated ones, the enlightened ones. What was that?
How do you feel about recruiting? Recruiting for what? An organization for a new world order. How's Paris? I don't want you to smoke anymore. Next thing you know, they'll stop being rude. Yeah, welcome to the new world order. When I've mentioned the new world order in school, the teachers and the faculty laugh. They literally call it a conspiracy. Even though it's been admitted, it's a conspiracy. But now I'm taking American history. Here's my book, American History. And as I was looking through it today in class, I came across something that we will be learning about. America in the New World Order. You can see that, I hope. 1970 to the present. They talk about how NAFTA is a big part of the New World Order. The one thing they should talk about is the NAFTA superhighway, but they don't dare mention that in our history books. Tonight, a proposal for an expanded so-called free trade zone from Alaska to uh, the tip of South America. It's a plan from the business elites, the political elites, that will cost more American jobs, cost American sovereignty, but it would fulfill the president's father's vision. Bill Tucker reports. It's not a new idea. President Bush talked about it back in 1991. It is a big idea, a new world order where diverse nations are drawn together in common cause. Now former United States Trade Ambassador Robert Zolik is talking about it again with renewed vigor. This time a new world order with business at the helm of trade and economic policy, advocating what he calls the Association of American Free Trade Agreements, a separate non-government entity which would include North, Central, and South America. What Zelik is really proposing here is a stealth trade agenda. It's not a national agenda. He's proposing to set up what's essentially a private organization to try to achieve what he couldn't get done uh, when he was the U.S. trade representative. Uh, and this is a business agenda. It's an agenda that goes hand in hand with the United States, Mexico, and Canada working quietly and behind the scenes to promote a common market with common deregulation for the benefit of multinational corporations. It's an agenda that so far has resulted in an increase in U.S. corporate profits of 45 percent, while wages of American workers have risen only 3 percent in the last five years. The main danger raised by Zelik's proposals is that the future of American international economic policy, which affects not only our nation's prosperity, but its national security, will be set not by the American people and their elected representatives, but by a small corporate elite that is accountable to no one but itself. Effectively surrendering the sovereignty of the United States. And as justification for trusting those who would have the authority, the argument is made that free trade promotes democracy and the welfare of the people. But, Lou, one has to look no further than China to see whether that, in fact, is true. You know, I, talking about Zolik's proposal, it's not Zolik's proposal, it's Daddy's proposal. And people better understand that they mean exactly what they're saying. It's a new world order they're trying to create, and they're trying to do so uh, not only uh, without approval uh, or consent of the governed in this country, uh, but despite the popular will. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a straightforward assault by the elitists in this country. And uh, appreciate it, Bill. Thanks very much, Bill Tucker.